Growing up as a child, I was into model trains. Um, my parents were nice enough to buy me a train layout when I was a kid, and I played with it a lot. Uh, as I grew up, I kind of got sidetracked with other things, you know, job, college, those kind of items, and I never really got back around to model trains. Well, when my parents moved from my childhood home to their current residence uh, during the Great Purge of 2017, I got all of my childhood toys, and one of them was the train layout. And when I got the train layout, it kind of sat in storage for a while in my basement. I didn't really know what to do with it. And then I kind of got it out one day and looked at it, and I realized it would actually be pretty fun to build models and other items associated with the train layout. Now, will I actually run the trains? I don't know. Uh, probably. But uh, building things associated with the train layout would be pretty fun. And I always remember wandering a turntable. So a turntable is, uh, you know, the turntable is what the train drives on, and it spins it around. So I thought, okay, there's got to be some sort of ch cost justification to try to build this. How much does a turntable cost? So I looked it up, and a Walther's, I believe, 130-foot turntable cost $300, a motorized version, which just seemed really, really high. So I thought, hey, this is a good example. Maybe I can build something a little cheaper. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I used um, 3D printing, Arduino, some electronics, um, to build a working prototype of a uh, turntable. So hopefully you can look at this and learn something, and I'll probably make like a part two and a part three to this, uh, but uh, this is just a good proof of concept, and hopefully you learn something, and hopefully this helps you out. Thank you very much for watching. Um, so first, what's going to drive your turntable? And in my experience, you have three options. You have a DC motor, um, you have a servo, or you have a stepper motor. And I thought the perfect answer was a servo. The reason I thought a servo was the perfect answer is because not only does it have precise movement, so you can say, hey, servo, turn 30 degrees or 60 degrees or 12 degrees, who knows? But it also has feed position feedback. So if you use an Arduino, which I'm using something similar to this, a little bit bigger, but similar, um, not only does your servo motor move you to the location you tell it to, but also tells the, the mo microcontroller what position it's currently at. So it's feedback. Um, and that would make programming so much easier. Um, so I did some research online, and it turns out that stepper motors only work in usually about 180 degrees of movement. So you couldn't do complete rotations. I thought, hey, I'll do a little bit more research, see what I can find out, and I found these 360 degree servo motors. Um, so I was like, perfect, solution found. So I 3D printed a bracket, and I made it so that the servo mounts directly in there, and this would mount to the bottom of my train layout, the plywood would be up here, and then I would just drill a hole in the plywood and install this uh, quarter inch rod, and then the turntable would ride on that. And I thought, perfect, problem solved. Well, turns out we ran into a few issues. And the first and foremost is that 360 degree servo motors don't have any position feedback. So in my book, I don't see the difference between a 360 degree servo motor and a DC motor. It, it was just, it wasn't even worth trying to use. So um, the servo motor went out the window. Without the position feedback, I didn't even want to try to use it. So the next thing I decided to use was a stepper motor, and I ended up using a 28BYJ48 5-volt DC stepper motor. And this has a driver board associated with it, which I don't know if I have any. There it is. It's a little driver board. It's probably hard to see in the package, but it's nothing big. And it can be driven directly from an Arduino. Um, Unless you have a Mega, I think they suggest you don't drive it from the power supply of the Arduino, but I'm using a Mega, Arduino Mega on this project, so no problem. Um, so the next design came in, so I designed another bracket. This one a little bit beefier. I mounted the stepper motor, bolted it underneath my test rig, plywood was here, and this rod was sticking out, put in some couplers and some bearings, and I thought, done. Well, I tried to, to use it and it didn't work, and it didn't work for a few reasons. Um, one of the reasons it didn't work is that these stepper motors aren't the highest quality and they actually have some play in the motor shaft itself. So that didn't help the issue. And then also, as your turntable gets longer, your margin for error gets smaller and smaller and smaller. You have to be more precise. 
So I could not get the precision I was looking for with a uh, single motor driven, driving a single rod to the turntable. It just wasn't working. So I decided I need to go with some sort of gear ratio, um, some sort of gearbox to make this work. So the next iteration was this. So I installed a two gears, one like this and one like this. Let's see if I can get it in there and show you. So then these two gears would be mounted underneath the, uh, the table and this little gear here was driven by a stepper motor on top and it is I believe a four to one gear ratio so that means that this stepper motor had to turn four times before this wheel would turn once and that wheel directly above it up here was driving the turntable and that produced some really good results I was pretty happy with that um, but the precision wasn't quite there so I was on the right track precision wasn't quite there um, so then I came to my final design, which I will show you now. So this is what the turntable looks like from on top. Um, as you can see here, I've got this rigid insulation foam, and that's what the top of my train layout is covered with. So the goal was to make the turntable um, to be less than two inches thick, so I could just drill a hole mounted on top of the train layout and then lay track directly on the rigid foam and it be able to line up with the turntable. So that was one of the goals of this project. So I'm gonna flip this around so you can see what the bottom of the train layout would look like with the turntable installed. All right. So again, this is just a test rig, um, but this is what the bottom looks like. And as you can see here, we've got a stepper motor and the stepper motor has a small gear back here and that gear is driving a larger gear, which then steps down the gear ratio again to another large gear. And I believe I have this at an eight to one gear ratio. So that means this, this stepper motor has to turn eight revolutions before this turns once. And this rod has been connected to the turntable on the other side, which gives me the precision I'm looking for, as well as the torque to be able to turn bigger locomotives. Um, so this is the current design I'm running with and it's really working well. As you can see, I've got quarter inch stainless steel rod and the three print is a little bit more rigid than it actually looks. I've got it, I don't know if you can see in there, but there's actually bearings pressed into the 3D print. So that keeps all of the rods perpendicular to the plane of the, the bottom of the, uh, the train layout. Um, then you, what you can't see underneath here is there's a slip ring, which then has these wires. So this, these wires can be used to feed um, the track on top of the turntable as well as, I don't know if I ever want to do anything with signals or DCC control or who knows what. But. So here is a brief overview of how the electronics work currently. They're going to change in the future, but for now this is how this works. We've got two potentiometers and then some buttons. Now, one of these potentiometers, whenever you turn it, actually changes how fast the turntable moves. It might be hard to see on camera, but it speeds up and slows down the rotation. Um, and that's good for whenever you're programming it, which I'll explain here in a second. And then this other potentiometer, you can flip it back and forth, but it changes the rotation. So this can make the turntable turn clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, based on how I turn this. So what this allows me to do is gives me some precision. So if, let's say I want to line up um, the side with this masking tape to my current track, my current piece of test track. This allows me to get really good precision and I'm trying to do this one-handed so, so bear with me a little bit. So I can get it lined up where I want that looks pretty good to me. So once it's lined up, I can come over here. I can press a program button and see that blue light flashing? That tells me that it's programmed. So then let's say I move this around. Just, you know, moving trains around. And then I want to move it back to that program position. I can then just go and hit the button that I programmed. And this automatically should line up. If it doesn't, I'm going to be a little embarrassed. There we go. Yep. So it directly lines up. Okay. So this is a quick demonstration of how the turntable is currently working. 
I have programmed the Arduino already off screen so that if I press a button it should do a full 180 degree turn. Um, this is just an old steam locomotive I have from when I was a kid. Uh, this is a Bachmann controller and I'm connecting this to the track with just some alligator clips. The alligator clips you can barely see on the right side here, these actually go underneath the table and then they pop out here using the slip ring and they power the, uh, the turntable power itself. So um, I'll back this onto the track and then I'll have to do a 180 and you'll probably see me fiddling around with the uh, alligator clips over here. What I'm doing there is flipping the polarity of the turntable so that when it does a 180 and the train comes back off, it's not shorting anything out. This will ultimately be done in the controller um, once it's finished, but it's not quite there yet. So let's give this a shot. And let's hope I don't run it off the turntable. So while the uh, train turns on the turntable, I'll give you an idea of how much this has cost so far. So for the bearings, the stainless steel rods, all of the assorted couplers, um, as well as the stepper motors, the Arduino, um, it was all roughly, I'd say, about $110. Uh, the most expensive part of this entire build was the slip ring. The slip ring itself was 40 bucks, so all in, I'm about $150 in this project. Um, and I bought the slip ring uh, because I thought it would be kind of a little bit more difficult to design one as uh, with as tight of tolerances as I could buy. But uh, all in all, this is still half the price of the current Walther's model. Um, and again, still a really cool project. And there we go. So... Um, this is, I, like I said before, this is just a prototype. I plan on uh, expanding on this in the future, making this much longer. Um, so right now this can barely fit this 440 steamer. I plan on having it much, much bigger so it can fit longer trains. But if this design works, I can easily extend it and make the turntable whatever size I want. Again, thank you very much for watching my video. If anyone has any comments on how they think I can improve the design, please leave them in the comments section below. Have a great day.